Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Crystal Crawford Show. Oh my goodness, I have to put a disclaimer on today's show. I am so excited and so enthusiastic about what we're about to talk about that I already know that this is going to be a shit show of information. So all I'm saying is buckle your seatbelt. If you're looking for a podcast episode where that's in order and very organized, this is not the one. <laughs> oh my goodness, I called this week's episode... <sighs> What the hell did I call it? Shutting off. Well, now I don't even remember. Shutting off, exploding and crying. No, yelling. Oh my God, whatever. We are going to explore the distractor implant, the, the four, the group of four distractor implants, anger, rage, fury, and hate. And I also put onto this episode that this is an additional taste of, of Salon de la Consciousness, which just started last week. <laughs> And actually, I'm wondering if how I'm feeling is in relationship to the topic itself. Hello, Jason, Anna, Ivona, Katerina. Good to see you guys. Hi, Shana. Okay, so what do you, how do you handle anger? Do you suppress it? Do you explode? Do you cry or something else? Or all three and even more? Okay, now. This is a big conversation. And one of the reasons we're spending 24 weeks on the distractor implants in Salon de la Consciousness, which is a monthly cost for a weekly call with me, which by the way, is already like so game changing. I'm like staggered. One of the reasons we're spending so much time on it is because it is so, these distractor implants are so integrated into our way of functioning in the world. And so we're very, very much um, using living beyond distraction as our template for our conversation. So it's, you know, sort of like a book club. I don't like book clubs though. I do studies. So, so as I was in the book this week, really getting prepared for tomorrow's call, I was just, it just sort of hit me that we needed to have some more conversations around what you do with all of that energy that you become and that you get awareness of and that things that occur like in a microsecond that you feel like you can't, you have no control over, um, but that there are tools for. Now, there, Anna cries. I know that another one of my friend cries. I also know a lot of people that suppress anger. Um, I did this crazy thing where I was suppressing it, but expressing it very loudly. So a lot of us do passive aggressive. I guess that's what that would be called. I know other people that just like explode. Like there's so many different ways that we handle this, but for the most part, anger, rage, fury, and hate, that group of implants is handled in a way that, that destroys us. And what I want to create in the world is a pot, the possibility for us to be able to recognize what's going on and then be able to act based on what's going on. Not, no, just then be able to act, period. Recognize what's going on and then be able to act. That's the world I want to live in. That's the one I'm creating for myself. Now, if you've listened to any of my stuff in the last year, you know that this has been an intense year for me in terms of things coming up. Um, it's been a glorious fucking year and I have been asking for total awareness. I've been asking for all kinds of things that are like, okay, you want total awareness? Here's where everybody's functioning from. You know, it's not always the easiest thing to, uh, to have, but there it is. So where do I want to start with this? Okay. The very, 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 very first place to start is... I just saw and I've got like 142 eyeballs on me and that's so exciting. How are you guys all doing? Um, <laughs> my reality just went boom. Hi, Jamie Joy. Nice to see you. Okay, so the very first place to start is this. And I can't emphasize how important what I'm about to say is. You are aware. I'm pausing on purpose. You are aware. So why is that so fucking relevant? <laughs> why is that three word sentence the most important thing you could ever get in your entire life? Because 
when you don't get that, you just think you're fucked up. You just think that you're mean. You just think that you are a reactive person. You just think all kinds of crazy things about you that aren't actually true about you because you don't get that you are aware. So that is key, 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 key number one. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna pin that, okay? Key number two, this reality, the one you grew up in, the one that is like this reality is designed to keep you locked into thinking, feeling, and emotions, the whole thing, and especially these distractor implants, okay? You are implanted and explanted to believe that you're crazy, that this is yours, that all this stuff that's going on in your world has is you. And it's the reasons and justifications for why you are as fucked up as you are. That's what you're implanted to believe. And these distractor implants are designed to keep you locked into this reality. So what's required from you is to recognize that you're aware, to recognize what you are aware of, and to start to get that you have choices that go beyond just just flipping out into like wherever you go. Okay, sorry, that whatever happened with Facebook was the most interesting thing <laughs> I've ever seen. How does it get better than that? All right, now I wanna start, I'm in Living Beyond Distraction, this book. I wanna read you this clearing, which is the clearing that Gary Douglas, it's right in the book, that Gary Douglas tells us to run for a really long period of time, okay? And it goes like this. What physical actualization of the unchangeable and unalterable disease of potency and power are you not acknowledging as the source for the creation of what is hidden beneath all distractor implants? Everything that is times a godzillion will you destroy and uncreate it all. Right, wrong, good, bad, pop, pop, online, shorts, boys and beyonds. So at the very end of this chapter, flipping in my candle, give me two seconds here. Okay, at the very end of this chapter, Dane gives us the three things that we need to use when we have something like this come up, when you're pissed off, when you wanna cry, scream, yell, hide, suppress, any and all of the above, okay? Step number one, you wanna pock and pod the distractor implants. So you wanna destroy and uncreate the distractor implants. That's important. And listen, one of the things Gary says in this chapter is that you, that you will have to do this a lot in the beginning because these come up a lot. and Anger, rage, fury, and hate are literally the set of distractor implants that this reality functions from primarily. So it's like we have been steeped in these. And as aware beings, not as fucked up beings, being steeped, it's like a tea bag, you're just steeped in a distractor implant soup, right? The thing you're going to have to destroy and uncreate are all the points of creation of this and all the points where you're destroying yourself with it kind of over and over and over and over until you get some more freedom. Okay. But the second step is to ask, is there a lie here spoken or unspoken? Now, this is what we're going to be diving into a bit more on this next call tomorrow. And I'm just closing the doors tomorrow for another 22 weeks. So if you want to come, you're welcome. Is there a lie here spoken or unspoken? Okay. You need to know what you just became aware of because when you're getting into anger, rage, fury, and hate, what you're into is reaction, not action. And so what I'm looking to create for myself is a reality of action. What actions can I take here? What choices do I have here? Now, so you have to ask, is there a lie here spoken or unspoken? Now, so many times, I don't know about you guys, but for me, most of the time, the lies that I become aware of in the moment that I'm reacting are the lies other people are telling themselves. Judgment is a lie, by the way. So I will, like, I remember last year, um, Andres and I were sort of storming our new relationship, right? We just moved right in together after, you know, knowing each other for three weeks. So, and then COVID, and there was a lot going on in the world. Like, it was a very cool year to get to be together. Um, but we also got to, like, learn a lot about each other in the process, right? And so there's these terms that when a new team is, like, you throw a, a big group of people together, there's these storming, norming, forming phases. Anyway, last year was the big storming phase, right? We're learning each other. So, and I'm, you know, on this ongoing, like aggressive pursuit of more consciousness. <laughs> so 
So, so like, I don't, I don't even know. He would walk in or something or, or, or something would occur and he would have something going on. And then I would just get pissed like about something. And the thing that I had to start to recognize as I got more of a grip on what was going on, that's important. You got to know what is going on. Not, is there a problem here and how do we fix it? But what is this? Distractor implant. Okay, cool. What did I just become aware of? And like, I'm not even kidding, like eight times, nine times out of 10, it was the judgment that was happening of himself. And then three, the third step is ask, okay, so this sensation right here, is this mine? Yes or no? So how much anger do people do at themselves all the, you know, when they're judging themselves? A little bit or a megaton? right? So this thing that you think is yours, that you're functioning from is if it's yours, you know, as if you are a mad person, you're a reactive person, you're a judgmental person, whatever you've decided about yourself, is that even yours? And it was no. And that's when I started to get like the level of my awareness, like, okay, I, I got the cognitive information, I even got it on some sort of level, you know, energetically, but truly to like, start to get it, I was like, holy shit, like I am, I'm so aware that I can feel a pin drop and, you know, across the ocean on the other side of the world. Are you? So when somebody's doing judgment of themselves or judgment of you, but let's just say they're just judging and even judging themselves, like, and you get pissed off or, or they're judging you. Is it true? Is the judgment true? And do you go looking for what you then, so what do you go looking for at that moment? That's basically the thing to start to look for. It's like, okay, so instantly this thing occurs, you're pissed and you either want to cry, explode, yell, shut down, suppress it. You got to go to the moment right before any of that coping stuff, right before the distractor implant stuff and go, wait, what did I become aware of? So I was becoming aware of like all kinds of judgments he was doing of himself and, and making them taking that personally. I mean, then, then I would do what I did with it, right? I would get pissed about it. I would react to it. I would go into defending who or what are you defending for or against that if you didn't defend for or against, it would give you all of you another clearing you can run and everything that doesn't allow it times a godzillion. Will you destroy and create it all? Why run good, bad, pop, pop, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. So like I would, so I go into defense and then it turned out later we would talk and it, none of it had anything to do with me at all. It was all stuff that he was doing to himself that I was a part, I would made myself a part of and made it into a thing. So that's just one example, but it's like, uh, there have been these other times where, you know, like something will occur and this amazing, this intense amount of energy surges up through my body. And instead of allowing myself to be it and be a, like the earth and explode, I will suppress it and be less so that I don't fill in the blank. And so it's like that moment before you start reacting to yourself or reacting to the other person, right in that moment before was what you became aware of, what you started to become in response to what you became aware of. So it's, it's like this distractor and plant stuff is there. What's required of you is a lot of diligence and a lot of presence, especially in the beginning, especially if you're doing a lot of stuff with it. So the three steps when you get pissed, and you want to suppress it, run away, yell, cry, explode, or to pock and pod the distractor implants. Number two, ask, is there a lie spoken or unspoken? That's key number 17, is that you got to get that energy is your first language. Energy is your first language. Not your thinking, not what you thought it was, not what you decided it was, but energy, the energy of something, that's your first language. So, and then ask, who does this belong to? Are you mine? And pock and pot everything that, that is not yours that holds any and all of that in place, okay? And I know I'm sort of belaboring this, but sometimes you got to hear things five times before you, 20,000 times before you get them, if it's me. All right, so, oh, man. And this is exactly what we do in Salon de la Consciousness, just so you know. I go straight back into the book and we discuss it. Okay. Oof, man, there's so much here I want to talk to you about. Okay, and let's, let's read this. 
because I get suppressed anger is a thing for a lot of us. This call participant goes, I have a question about anger. As we've been talking, I realize that whenever I've had anger come up, I've either subverted it or pushed it down so there would be no acting out of anger in my life. Anybody else? One of the things that we were told in my house was that violence is not an option, which on the one hand, yeah, I get it. You don't want your kids hating each other. On the other hand, they were so violent with judgment. It was like you were living in a violent household where they were saying, don't be violent. It was very weird. Um, so, so this, this chick, this person is saying, I realized that whenever I've had anger come up, I've either subverted it or pushed it down. So there would be no acting out of anger in my life. I would sit there and steam or I would leave. When you said that we get angry if there is a lie involved, I looked back and said, oh my God, that's what would ha that's what was happening 90% of the time. I wasn't angry at what was going on. I was just steaming inside and I wanted to leave. This is what Gary says to that. When you recognize that a lie will create anger and you ask, is there a lie here? Then you have the ability to act instead of having the necessity to go away and stuff it. Going away and stuffing it are not actions, those are reactions. This call participant goes, so in that environment, there's just a lie present? And Gary said, well, there may be more than one. If you ask, is there a lie here? You will not buy the lie and you won't create a reaction based on the lie. Instead, you will ask, what is really desired or required here? Garrett's call participant. So if I'm aware that there is a lie, could I be aware of a lie that's being projected at me? Or could I be aware of a lie in my own reality? And Gary goes, yes, all of the above and more. Once you acknowledge there's a lie, you have choice. Go back to choice once you acknowledge a lie. If you do not acknowledge a lie, you can't go back to choice. Okay. Um, oh, man. Uh, so... Oh God, so much information in here. All right, cool. Now, so let me run this clearing that's in this chapter with you guys, okay? So what physical actualization of the unchangeable and unalterable disease of potency and power are you not acknowledging as the source for the creation of what is hidden beneath all distractor implants and everything that is times a godzillion will you destroy and create it all? Right, we're going to pop up all nature, it's poison beyonds. And I, I guess I think where I'm like pulling the thread through this whole conversation is really the way that I've used this. So I've used this mostly by the book, you know, with the tools that I've given you from the book. But the other thing that's really guided my process is that is this. Am I having the effect I want to have here? Like, okay, so you take a relationship, for example, right? In a in any relationship, it's, it's supposedly normal to like have problems with the other person, right? That's normal relationship. You talk to anybody who's married or in a long-term relationship and you tell them that, man, it's been intense lately. You guys have been fighting a lot, for example. Everybody you talk to, except for maybe an access person that's been doing it for a really long time, is just going to look at you and go, yeah, I get it. That's marriage. That's expected. Having difficulties with people, especially somebody that you're in a close relationship with, is expected. It's normal. So... I guess that's the thing I'm really aware of as we're having this whole conversation is like what we're talking about doing here is breaking yourself out of what is normal because what is normal and average and real to everybody else doesn't have to be normal, average and real for you. That was the big thing that I changed for myself, especially with this relationship. I mean, I created this relationship out of what do I want my life to be like? What do I want the future to be like? And then when I discovered that, you know, we're talking like this is six months back now. But when I discovered that I was being normal and average and real and the same in that particular area, that's the thing that really started to get to me. And I guess that, that that's for me, the my why of what I why I want to have these more of these conversations in the world, because it is normal to react. But do you want to be normal? Are you normal? It is real. To everybody else that you would have things you're mad about and you would have expectations and you would have standards and you know you would pick up on on lies and and, and 
you know, stand up for yourself. That's normal. Is how, what's it, how's it working? You know, is it creating what you want to have? Is it like, for me, I kept looking at like, whatever it is I'm doing here, I feel right about it, but it's generating this very different future where probably we're not together. Cause I was, I was working myself into, you know, these sort of, not sort of reactive internal frenzies. And even if I didn't let it out, the energy was there. And I recognized what was happening, but I really had to go after like, what is this to change it? Not because, because there was a couple of times, and this is, I, again, I, I feel a little bad because I'm talking about almost like six months, eight months back now, but I think it's really important because I really had to get, like, I really had to get assertive. That's the thing about these distractor implants is that they're so embedded in the way we function that for you to change it, you have to look at a few key things. Do you want to be the same as everybody else? What do you want to create with these people in your life, with that person, with your kids? Are you being the person that you want to be or do you want to be somebody else that's greater that you know you can be that you haven't seemed to be able to achieve? And I'm not kidding. That right there guides the whole process because because if you do choose to engage in changing this in your world, it's going to require diligence and work. And I guess it's at this point I wanted to share with you a little bit about what we created as home play for last week in the Salon de la Consciousness because every week we do this study, but then after the study I give you guys like home play, like here's how you can use this in your life this week, see what shows up. So, I mean, the thing we looked at last week was reaction and action. It's like, where am I doing reaction and what can I choose that's different? But you got to start to recognize where you're doing reaction, not just have it as an integrated part of the way you function in your family, you know, without any consciousness to it. If you want something different, you got to start looking at where am I doing reaction and where could I do action? Um, and then every time anger comes up, I had everybody ask, am I doing anger or potency? Because that's something else that happens is that potency gets misidentified as anger and anger gets misidentified as potency and potency is the ability to change things. Man, there's been, there's also been amazing times, you know, with, with my partner where like it just, something needed to shift. It just needed to change. And I was willing to be that energy and he was willing to be that energy and our two potent beings coming into contact with each other have created so many different possibilities, right? So, but you got to start to recognize what's the difference. You know, most people do anger as potency or explosion as potency. And then those of us that have done a lot of suppressing over our, all our lives, right? We've suppressed, 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 suppressed until we explode and then change everything and we consider that potency but true potency is when you come in contact with another substance you collide with it and change it it doesn't require anger it's your being so you have to start to recognize the difference between anger and potency and then so every so the task the task was every time anger comes up ask yourself am i doing anger or potency if it's anger you pock and pod the distractor implant, and then you can do those three steps that I mentioned at the beginning of the video and destroy and uncreate it. And then the second thing is, third thing, whatever, what other choices do I have here? But again, that question of what other choices do I have here is guided by what do you want to be in the world? If you, and that's, man, that's the thing just so many normal people don't look at. When you assume things, when you assume that this is how relationship is, when you assume that this is how your life is, when you assume that this is all there is, then you put yourself at the effect of the way everybody else is doing life, you know? And then I guess you fit. But do you have a greater demand of yourself? Do you have a greater desire to have a different reality? Would, would more ease, joy, glory, you know, more money than God, all the ease that comes with having more money than God, a thriving business, all the things, a thriving relationship. You know, is it a possibility in your world that you'd like to have more, um, more kindness, gentleness with you and other people? Like, you know, what do you want to have as your life? That right there is going to, is going to be the driver to, okay, what can I choose here that's different? Because that's what kept driving me. 
like I kept you know in this period of time when I was doing so much reaction I, I kept looking at that going man this is not the person I want to be this is how my family does it this is how this has shown up in other relationships this has been my normal I mean I've got a big demand beyond normal so what's that what's required of me okay now and so again, going back into last week's home play for Salon de la Consciousness, their, their goal was their target, whatever. <laughs> One of the things on the list was to pay attention. Hey, pay attention. Get the difference for you when you're doing a distractor implant versus when you're being potency. And then ask, am I willing to be as potent as I am to change this? So if you're a person who does a lot of suppression, are you willing to be as potent as you are to, to make the change that's required? If you're a person who does a lot of explosion to control, are you willing to be as potent as you are to create a change instead of just getting people to move, right? To actually affect a change. And then I told them to voice loop that clearing because the clearings that were given in these books are like so game changing. And all it takes is one to like unravel, you know, billions of years of being implanted with this distraction that keeps you from the choices that you have. Look, did you come here to be like everybody else or did you come to institute a different reality? You've got to really claim that and look at that. So a different reality is going to require a different kind of work, a different kind of presence, a different kind of choice mechanism, right? A different reality requires something different of you. And for me, it's required a lot of, I've had to, <laughs> I've said this a million times, but I've had to be aggressive with myself a lot because I'm the only one that can stop me. I'm the only one that can like run myself over. So do you want something different? All right. So let me run this again. What physical actualization of the unchangeable and unalterable disease of potency and power are you not acknowledging as the source for the creation of what is hiding beneath all distractor implants? And everything that is times a godzillion will you destroy and create it all. Right, wrong, good, bad, pop, buck, all land shorts, boys and beyonds. <laughs> and Dane says right here in the, this has been the most distracted I have felt on any live ever so far. And Dane says in the book here, he's like, by the way, if some of you have noticed that you are feeling distracted, could it be that that's the subject we're discussing? Just thought I would point that out. Anyway. Share this with your friends if you got something out of it. Go back and take notes on it so you can make yourself your own PDF of how to handle these things. Like study the tools that are going to give you the freedom that you can't seem to get to on your own. Um, and if you'd like support and you want to do that with a group of other people, we are in Salon de la Consciousness opening up totally new universes for ourselves every single week. So you're more than welcome there. Crystaljoycrawford.com slash salon. And otherwise... You have all my gratitude for being you in the world, and I will see you guys next week.